All right, so, so far with our logos, we have made a refined sketch. Then we have posted a black shape logo. And then in the last video, we just outputted our first color variation. Now I call them color variations instead of color logos because as long as they're from the same black shape logo, you can have infinite variations and they'll still read, whether they have drop shadows, glows, gradients, what have you. But if I wanna do spot color, like have individual components of my logo filled in, I can do that this way as well. So I'm gonna do it with, with these options, these layer styles. And what I changed was the color overlay. But how do I select? I go to my smart object and I use my magic wand with contiguous checked and I can hold down shift and I can select, for instance, let's do these three actually, these three stripes. And then I hit command J and then I'm going to copy the layer style from my red by right clicking on that layer, say copy layer style, and then I can paste it onto this one. Now red works, but it makes a lot more sense if these are white, right? And with the stroke, I can have them as white. So I'm going to go back to my vector smart object. You always go back to your vector smart object. And then I duplicate. And now I'm going to paste that layer style, make them all red. But then I'm going to change that color overlay from red to white to get white stripes. Which I was just listening to in the car this morning. And if I think that that is a little too dark, that's because of the gradient that's underneath it, right? So what I can do is give it its own gradient overlay that isn't sharp like this. I can just do the basics and I can just do a white. And if I still want a slight gradient, then I can reverse it or I can scale it differently. So you get to independently choose these options as you go. All right, now what if I don't like that red and I want that instead to be like a blue? That's what's beautiful about doing them as layer styles. All of these things can be changed very easily and multiples can be saved. So maybe I want something like this. instead of the red. Now, what if I want stars in there? Or what if I want something even more elaborate? Well, let me save this first because this has all these options in it, right? All in my layers. I can turn these things on and off and get back to my black shape logo. All in the same file. Very, very helpful. But what's the last thing I can do? That's looking a little purple, so I'm going to update that to be a little bit brighter blue. There we go. I like that a little bit more. So it's all just kind of subtlety, and you can use hex codes. You can use different palettes to be inspired by. But the last thing you can do is what we learned really early with our first exercise putting color into our cartoon jumble as an extra. I can look up a texture. Um, let's see, like a risograph navy flag print. Simple. I don't know. Then I can look for images. And let's see. take something like this, or take something like this, here we go, open it in a new tab. This is pretty small resolution, but you'll get the idea. And then I can drag that into Photoshop. And then I can use Command T, spread it to cover everything. And then how do I cut out from that? I click on my vector smart object layer, use 
my magic wand with contiguous unchecked so I get all the undercuts, like the eyeball. And then I click on the empty space, right? Then I click on invert selection. So select inverse, click on the, the wrapping paper I chose, and then do Command J to duplicate it. And now I have a logo that's cut out of external colors. And then I can blend that with what I had otherwise, right? Something like this. So I can do some pretty crazy things with my color variations as long as that same black shape is coming through. So I kind of like that. It's kind of interesting. Maybe I play with the opacity a little bit. Or maybe I try... There we go. Inverting it just a little bit so that the star is just very subtle. But there. Then I can even try inverting it, which didn't do much because I'm in saturation mode. So layer styles, yeah, I like that. And then if I don't like an aspect of it, like maybe I don't like the bottom of the star because it's not quite centered, maybe I just take that portion and I delete it. So these are ways you can fine tune, make your distinctions and your decisions. All that can work pretty well. So whatever color variation you choose, I'll go ahead and save that as a, overall, I have all of them now embedded into my project. I'll make it super subtle, I like that. Okay, and now if maybe I wanted to print that one, that's gonna become my print file. So how do I make my prints? It's super easy. This is the first time we're actually making a file for printing. But first, let me save it as a PNG and put it up to Canvas. So this is going to be my color logo. But this is my second variation. So I'm going to say color logo 2 with all the spot color as a PNG to my desktop. Okay, then I'm going to find that file which is right here. I'm going to mark it orange. And go to Canvas. Go to the assignment post. Edit my post. And just like I posted my black shape logo, you can print as many color variations as you want, but you're required to print at least one. So you, yeah. You don't want to use a clipping mask. You want to use your magic wand with contiguous for spot color. So this is my color shape vector. And I'm going to call it color vector variations. And I'm going to go ahead and post two, but you're only required to post one. So I like this one. But how do, how do you know what a good logo is? It has to be clear, engaging, and versatile, right? But with all that kind of subtlety, maybe that's not quite as clear as my kind of stri more straightforward one, which was just this PNG. That's why the black shape is so important. Because sometimes less is more. Very often less is more. But both of these are color variations on my black shape logo. Okay, and now I'm done with the assignment. But I'm not done with what we need to do today. Remember all the steps of the midterm. So the next step is to make our first print-ready file. 
So if I'm going to print this, I actually think I'm going to print it without those extra features. I'm going to print it probably without these as well, without the, the flag colors. But maybe I'll leave that white in there. Yeah, I think I like that. So just something really simple. Maybe I'll leave that red in. But only... Yeah, maybe I'll make a duplicate of this and change it back to red. So that's what's great about these layer styles is you can keep trying variations out without ever hurting the quality of your original. No, I don't like the red. But I can always have it as a as an option, right? Maybe I do. Hmm, what to do? Actually, I like that. Okay, so this is going to be my variation. So this is my third color variation. And I can save it as a PNG to put into Canvas. So this is my color three logo. But how do I make it print ready? Now I want to print. What I do is I'm going to say file, save as a copy, and you're going to change its format to TIFF. Now, the way you also make sure that this is the one you print is at the very beginning of the file, you're going to put capital PR dash. That stands for print ready. So this isn't only one that's formatted for printing. This is the one that is in the right format for printing, which is called a TIFF format. It is an archive format. You hit save. It's going to my desktop. And then this is really important. Under the TIFF options, you always want LZW. That is a way of compressing your image's size for, for clearer transport and for clearer uh, buffering of the printer without losing any quality. It's what's called a lossless compression format. It's a little bit of programming magic. Leave all the other defaults, say OK. And then it's going to ask you this. Including layers will increase the file size. You say OK. But then you realize, well, I'm printing this. That's all I'm doing with this file. I don't need all these layers. So once you have it as a TIFF, you're going to close your PSD. You're going to find your TIFF, your TIFF. It's right here. You're going to mark it gray. We're going to mark our print-ready files gray so that they really stand out. And then you're going to open that with Photoshop. This is all to protect so you don't lose your layers in your PSD. Now in your TIFF, which is made for print ready, you're going to go to Layer, Flatten Image, and discard all the hidden layers. Because you have decided that is what I want to print. And then you save it. And then you can close it. And then we're going to create a new folder in your master folder because this is not for assignment four. This is for your midterm critique. Prints. And now I have my first midterm critique print. It is the TIFF file that is print ready, flattened, because this file can be read by any image program and it will never lose quality like a JPEG or a PNG. And because we flattened it from an empty background, that perfect white is not going to print. That will be the paper coming through. All right. I'm going to stop the video here and show you how we can make the other print-ready projects.